Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here with Smart Business Moves. I'm with Liz. Hey, Liz, how are you? Hi, all. I'm well, thanks. And we've got a really awesome special guest, a friend of ours for a long, long time, Mr. Bill Gelderman. Hey, Bill, how are you? I'm just great, Tom. How are you guys doing? Doing awesome. Awesome. Bill is a uh, principal with a company called The Steering Group, and they help uh, small businesses and some businesses not so small, larger businesses as well with uh, personnel assessments. So when you're hiring people and you're trying to figure out who's going to be a good fit in your company, he's got a program called Orion that helps you. He'll tell you all the details, but it's really helpful, really awesome. And if you want to have a great workforce, you need to start off by hiring great people. And Bill's got some tools that'll help us do that. And he's going to tell us uh, some some tricks and tips that's going to help us uh, do a better job of hiring and getting the right people in our organization. Um, Liz, is there uh, anything going on in your world today that uh, we want to talk about? Ooh. I feel like I have been just running from thing to thing today, but luckily I have not been putting out fires, just busy working. So I can't think of anything big that's going on today for me, Tom. How about, how about for you? Anything over there? You do kind of have some kind of something, don't you? Yeah. We've been busy. Anything with Castle Keepers? Oh, should we talk about that? <laughs> I thought we might. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I had a Castle Keepers experience today. They cleaned my house. <laughs> Oh, yay. I'm like, I hope it was a five-star one, Bill. <laughs> I have to admit that when I get that email that says, please rate us, I automatically delete it. So I apologize. Look at my oh. face, Bill. I know. I'm looking. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. You're lucky we like you. That's it. Uh, I don't. You're lucky. I, I hate those things. I don't do them for anybody. It's, I'm not picking on you. I don't do them for anybody. You give you, you you give everybody the same treatment. Right, exactly. I'm consistent. All right. Okay. Well, we'll tell everybody that it's not that Bill <laughs> hates. <laughs> well, you've been around a long time, so and I'm still here. We um, okay. had a had a, a business transaction in in, in Atlanta today. Um, a good friend of mine I've known for a long time, Richard Wilson, has has been a. Uh, CEO of a house cleaning business called Britain Maids in, in Atlanta. And they've been in business for, I think, 34 years. They've been at it for a long, long, long time. time. And Richard got to the point where he decided it was time for him to uh, move on to, to things other than, than, than just cleaning homes. So we worked on an arrangement and Castle Keepers uh, basically bought that business. And we, we closed on that today. And we have a whole lot of uh, new customers and uh, a lot of new cars, <laughs> a whole lot of new everything that, that we need to, to figure out what to do with. So, um, yeah, that uh, that was an exciting piece of news that uh, kept us busy today or just got us started busy. And we're going to be busy for a long time. But um, that's, uh, that's that's big news in our world today. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. Hey, Tom, are we going to try, um, so we had talked, you and I had talked yesterday about um, maybe updating everybody, maybe at the end of the of the Facebook Live or the beginning, we, I don't know that we talked about when, uh, about where the numbers are, because the numbers are kind of going up again, just so that we can be a little bit more prepared. Last time when everything happened, we were all like, you know, chasing our tails, but we kind of wanted to make some smarter business moves this time and paying attention to what's going on so we can be yeah. prepared. Yeah, we, we can definitely do that. We probably need to do it sooner rather than later. We're thinking that Tuesday, definitely, we would do a deeper dive on that. But if we want to chat about that a little bit, I can pull some stuff together and tomorrow we can get into that. Okay. Sounds good. Because I know they're going up, but I don't have, you know, different parts of the country yeah. have different things going on. And um where I am and Bill, where you are, um, it's it's uh, not getting any better, is it? No, ours is really slow. And uh, so we put out a special and I was trying to figure out how to do it to have it reach the most people at the right time. 
because my motive was we wanted to give people who were using the Orion a, di a discount, but not just for the sake of giving them a discount, but to help them as they're starting to have to reopen and, and bring their workforce back to strength, that they wouldn't forego best practices just to save a few bucks when money's tight. So by giving them a, we would ended up giving them a choice and they could pick June for third, you know, for four weeks of June, four weeks of July or four weeks of August. And we would give them $5 off of every report they ran during whichever period they selected that they thought would be the most beneficial for them. So if they knew they weren't going to start hiring until August, they picked August, right? In oh, fact, awesome. we sent out a reminder, I think yesterday, and we had a whole bunch of responses come back, people picking either July or August is when they, they wanted to use that discount. Well, we should probably kind of circle around at the end here and remind everybody about this and, and send them over to your website after we explain what Orion is for some of the people that might not know. Okay. Because I know that a lot of people don't even know. All right. Do you, um, well, you talk about DISC a lot, and that's mm -hmm. my foundation. That That's what started the steering group. But at a conference in, in Phoenix in 1996, you know, this sounds like, yeah, it all started a little radio <laughs> station in <laughs> Kansas, right? 50,000 yeah. watt radio yeah, 50, station. Yeah, 50,000 watt. And I was the sportscaster on the weekends. But uh, the they, Orion made a presentation at this TTI disc conference, and I thought, well, that's really cool because I got disc that I'm using for basically manager level and up. But I, if those same companies have other people that they're looking at for different reasons, and this would be a good fit. So to make a long story short, I signed on as a distributor for Orion back in 96. And I was having a meeting where with one of the largest made franchise organizations that happens to be headquartered in Atlanta. So you probably know who I'm talking about. And they had done disc reports on the entire management team. So we were having an all day meeting in their corporate headquarters going over the results and talking about these different reports. And one of the vice presidents and I, during a break, went out and we're having a cup of coffee. And he said, gee, you know, it's too bad we don't have something like this to, for our franchisees to use on the maids. And I went, oh, wait a second. <laughs> right? uh -huh. So I reached into my little bag of tricks and I showed him the Orion and he was gone, oh my God, this is amazing. So they started touting this throughout their franchises. One of their franchisees in New York belonged to the fledgling ARCP which was the, oh, yeah. the, 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 predecessor, yeah, the predecessor of ARCSI. And um, so this gal in New York, who was a franchisee, wrote an article that went into the ARCP monthly magazine, right? Yeah. And in the article, just as she just made a very brief reference about how this Orion report was making her life so much better and making her hiring experiences so much, you know, improved it so much and reduced her turnover and blah, blah, blah. And suddenly I'm getting calls from all over the country, right? Because it wasn't just that franchise now, that opened it up to the world through yeah. the ARCP uh connection. So then I started going to Perry Phillips at the time was over in uh, Mississippi, I think. Then he moved the offices yeah. for ARCP to Atlanta. Good, good call. Right. So <laughs> suddenly I'm doing ARCP meetings and writing articles for the ARCP magazine. And then of course it evolved to ARCSI and ISSA and 
so on. But the point is, we go back a long way, <laughs> right? Yeah, with, okay. with paid services. And the one of the funny things that's happened, I got referrals from maid services to other types of businesses. And they would be at a networking thing and, you know, maid service owners talking to a pet sitting company. Nice. And she's, they're, com they're commiserating about their uh, hiring problems. So the maid service owner says to the pet service owner, you really should call Bill Gelderman at the steering group and talk to him about the Orion. Let me give you his name and number. So we would get hookups like that. Well, now we have almost as many pet sitting companies, pet service companies around the country as we do maid services. <laughs> That's and funny. Just from a little bit one, of network. We've got one pet ser service that has over 150 dog walkers. They've got about wow. 10 people in the office, and it's a multi-million dollar business walking dogs. There's 7,000. Yeah. Where, where is that? Where is it, Bill? It's on the East Coast. <laughs> like in New York? Yeah, and the higher. Um, yeah, it, it's above Charleston and below New York. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> 100, 100, That's a lot. 100, yeah. And we've got others in Chicago. Uh, we've got a couple of really big ones in Chicago. Uh, we've got a couple of big ones here in Atlanta. So they've yeah. all, they've pretty much caught up volume-wise with the residential cleaning industry for us. Yeah. And it, it, that really surprised me. We do, uh, you know, aside from residential cleaning, uh, pet services, uh, we also do uh, home health agencies. Okay. Because well, can you tell us why? It's well, all why, about home, why? it's all about home services. You're sending employees into other people's homes, and you mm -hmm. have a you have a uh, if not a legal responsibility, certainly a moral responsibility to do the best you can to ensure that you're not sending drug addicts and thieves into those people's homes, right? Yeah. And in the past, and I say the past, you know, if you look back 15, 20 years, um, most all hiring decisions were made very subjectively. You know, the person walks in and they look good and they answered your questions the way you thought they yeah. should. And you go, oh, yeah, no problem. You hire them. And then somewhere between six days and six months later, you look at that person and you go, who on earth are you? You are not the person I hired, right? And they they just have turned on you. And one of the common experiences that I had personally and I hear about from owners all the time, you hire somebody and you think, oh, this is going to be my rock star. And they just turn into the biggest nightmare you could have. Yeah. On the other hand, well, though, you hire people that you think are, are just going to be kind of seat fillers. You're not really excited about the hire, but you think, well, they're okay. You know, we're going to give them a shot. They turn into the rock star. Right? So, so tell us, though, how does the Orion help us? Because a lot of people have never heard of it, so they don't even know what it is. The so Orion how is the a, Orion? Yeah, it's an 80-question survey that the applicant completes and there's a number of ways you can use it so we work with individual owners to come up with the best way to use it but you can do it on paper you can do it on you if you have a kiosk type arrangement where you can let them do it on a computer in your office you can set them down on a computer and they can do it that way or you can, you know, now with the social distancing you can email it to them and have them do it at home Nice. And there's no problem with that either. So it all depends on your particular circumstance. And every every business runs just a little bit differently. So that it's not a one size fits all. We can kind of tweak the way you use it. But well, why it, why would anybody use the Orion? Why can't I just make up my own test and my own quiz? Well, number one, it wouldn't be valid. And you you have no way of knowing <laughs> you have no way of knowing whether the results you're getting back are accurate or not. 
uh, and the Orion has been validated to death. It's it's rated at ninety percent overall in its in its accuracy. What does that mean? Oh, accurate for what? A no. For providing you accurate information that it's, okay. uh, it's meaning the outcomes are statistically valid and meaningful outcomes. Okay. So mm -hmm. we're we're not. One of the things we have to make sure people understand about the Orion is it's not there to help you pick out great employees. It's really mostly focused on avoiding risk. So I want to, if somebody is high risk for drug use or high risk for theft, you don't want to hire those people. And uh, Tom, if you'd pull that. that sure. Sure. I can pull that up, but I want to ask you a question before we, we get too deep into it, because I know a number of, of business owners are really proud of like these assessments and things that they kind of build themselves to figure out how to hire good employees. Are there any legal risks that we might be taking if we're coming up with criteria that's not statistically validated and normalized is there anything that we need to be worried about as clean well you could going? you could be you you could be uh, accused of dis, of a discriminatory practice right right and some type of eeoc claim right. of, yeah you, you would know. be you would be ripe for an eeoc claim right so you just can't make up i mean well no. you're taking some risk if you're just making up something or you're just using something that you found on the internet. Yeah, that... it would actually be illegal, but you know, <laughs> it's whatever, know. it's only illegal if you get caught, but, and that's a joke. But yeah. Um, yeah, it's just not valid. You don't have any found. You can't you can't acquire a sufficient amount of data and testing to to validate that the responses you're getting back in that process are. In legally informative. I think that's uh, that's important for us to at least oh, be, yeah, be aware of. Orion, is, Orion. Well, let me give it to you from the other point of view. Orion has never, bold underline never, been successfully sued because of the outcome of an Orion report. Nice. All right. I'm not saying they've never been sued. I'm just saying they've never been successfully sued. So what happens now is nobody even wastes their time filing suit against, you know, if you use the Orion and somehow that person figures out that you didn't hire them because they had a bad Orion outcome, which you should never tell anybody that anyway. But if you did and they decide to go see Joe Lawyer on the corner, one of the first things he's going to do is do some research on pr prior cases. And what he'll find out is that the administrative law judges don't even let it go to court because Orion has such a wealth of data to support the outcomes of the report that you don't have any grounds to sue on. Bill, uh, we've, got a, we've got a question here from Brian O'Neill. He wants to know, do you have the Orion test in Spanish? We have it in Spanish and we have it in uh, Canadian English and Canadian French. Okay. Right. And that's both in paper and online. The paper version, you know, it, it's not real exotic, It's but it's 80 questions and it takes the typical applicant um, about 20 minutes to complete it. Oh, so I would have thought it was going to take longer, right? 80 no. questions, but no. it's just right. real quick. It's yeah, they're answering on a 10 point Likert, Likert scale from, uh, you know, they totally agree to they totally disagree or some variance on that. 10 point scale all right so it goes pretty quick it doesn't it doesn't take much time there's you know the questions one of the questions that cracks me up all the time there's one that says i've had four or more jobs in the last two years and people will say they slightly agree or slightly disagree <laughs> right? 
And it's like, you know, you either did or you didn't. Do you not remember how much you worked on where you worked the last four years? But when people, when That's people, funny. Answer, I like that. yeah, when people answer with slightly agree or slightly disagree, generally what they're saying is, I just don't want to tell you. Right. Yeah. That's what that really means. Yeah. Or they thought it was a job at the time that they signed up for it. And once they right. got there, they really weren't sure. If yeah, it was exactly. Or yeah. You know, along those lines, one of the scales, the one of the scales on the, uh, assessment, the second one down is work attitudes. And that's about how, or I'm sorry, prospects for long-term employment. And that's looking at what's your attitude about building a relationship with an employer versus, you know, I'll take this job today, but if I can make 10 cents more someplace else tomorrow, I'm gone, right? So this, somebody was, uh, one of my, well, you, I, mean, I can say her name. You all know Stephanie Nesseth. She yeah. and I were she, one she of the may things, be there. She often is. Uh, yeah. one, of, one of the things I always tell people if you have a, a prospect, if you have a candidate that comes up below average on prospects for long term employment, that doesn't mean you shouldn't hire them. What it means is that when you check the references, you have to say specifically Mary's, or in this case, Jane. Jane's application says that she worked for you from April of 2013 to March of 2017. Is that correct? And you have to say it just like that. And what will happen is you get one of two responses. They'll say, yeah, that sounds about right. Or they'll start laughing like hell. <laughs> because what people do who have had 25 jobs in the last five years, they know they can't list all of those. So they pick a couple and they stretch the dates out to make it look like they were continuously employed at these three or four companies when, in fact, they've they've had 25 jobs. So I was yeah. talking, I was talking with Stephanie one day and and it, this was the number of years ago, but we were talking about something totally unrelated and we got to the topic of prospects for long-term employment. And she says, oh my God, let me tell you about this experience. So somebody who had worked for her was applying someplace else for a job and the, per the people were calling Stephanie for a reference. And they said, well, her application shows that she worked for you for three years. And Stephanie started laughing. And she says, really? She worked for me for three months. Oh, yeah. right. that's a big difference right there. Yeah, but people do that all the time. I mean, it's, a, it's an every single day happens constantly. Yeah. Right. You know, I would love it, Bill, if you would go like right down this list, starting at the very, very top with like experiments yeah. with drugs and just yeah. tell us like, well, like the first about thing that. You, the very first thing you see at the top of the report is the validity index mm -hmm. right under the name. And this, by the way, this is actually a real report on a real person. And she was a mess. <laughs> so the only thing I changed in all of this was the name for the obvious reasons and the phone number. But um, the validity index comes up either low risk, marginal risk, or high risk. About 70% of the reports come back low risk. And what that doesn't mean the candidate's low risk. It means that you can believe what you're about to read, that it's accurate, all right? Okay. Marginal risk means it's not, you know, they may have answered some questions the way they thought you wanted them to answer. So it's not 100% accurate, but don't throw the baby out with the bathwater yet. And then level three high risk is don't believe anything you're about to read because it's useless. <laughs> it's all bad. And about fire, 10, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And about 10% of the reports come back high risk. So mm -hmm. over the years, one of the things that happens all the time, and I'm sure you guys can relate to this because everybody has done it, you get all the signals in the world that you should not hire this person, but there's something about them you like and you go ahead and hire them anyway, right? And you almost, yeah, always, yeah. You, you almost always live to regret it, right? Yeah. So yeah. I can tell you, I have had dozens and dozens and dozens of people say to me, 
well, they were high risk on the validity index, but I just thought maybe they were stupid and didn't know how to answer the questions or something like that. And oh my God, I wish I had listened to the report. They're just awful. Right? And that happens yeah. all the time. And, you know, we all want to have a, an, a, an open heart and we want to have a, a concern for people. But we also have to realize we're running a business and a bad hire hurts the business, which also oh. hurts all the other people in the business. Because yeah. when you get somebody who's a bad employee, they're not just impacting you and your bottom line. They're impacting the morale of the whole organization. That's such a good point, Bill. Right. I mean, it's really expensive, obviously, but it can cost you in lo loss of your other employees as right. well. Yeah. yeah, that's such a great point. I think that's forgotten a lot of times. I think a lot of companies that use this consistently, their employees actually like it because what it's sending a message to their employees is we're not going to just let any Joe Schmo that comes in off the street be one of your co-workers we value you and we don't want those people having to be in your elite pool of residential cleaners so the fact well, that it's, know, the company we, likes we do talk a lot about matter meaning and measure you know making sure that your your people feel like they matter in the company right. and yeah. that this is such a great way of of showing that not not yeah. only do you know? Do we like you as a person? But you actually matter, and right. there is some real meaning in this job. This eighty-question quiz that we weed you out by actually makes a huge difference. Not everybody's good enough. You are. Right. You yeah, it. You exactly. The card. I yeah, like that. Yeah, supervisory attitude is: Can this person accept the fact that somebody else is going to be telling them what to do, and will they follow policy and procedure? So, and this is particularly important. I know I didn't get to watch yesterday and you were talking about teams versus solos, right? So if you do solos, this, you know, this really becomes hypercritical because people who are below average on supervisory attitude, you can train them for three weeks and you can shadow with them for three weeks and do all that. The minute you turn them loose on their own, they're going to do as they please, when they please, how they please. Right? And they just don't care. And they tend to be troublemakers. They tend to be that employee who tries to stir up trouble with the other people, you know, and cause little insurrections and things like that. You know, and again, that's we've all had that person, too. Right. Well, you know, you say that, Bill, I, I'm wondering now that you say that I'm remembering back to what Chris said yesterday. And he said that he has a lot of problems with his people when he went solo. One of the big problems he had is like they just overrun his phone call. I mean, his phone, they just keep calling and calling. They ask about every single thing. And that's probably tying into this because they they are not. Um, meant for a supervisory position. They don't know how to make decisions. They, oh, okay. Well, well, again, this is how do you accept supervision? You know, oh, and, which, you and, and part of that is training. Do you, when somebody's training you, are you paying attention and are you prepared to follow policy and procedure? So people that are, and people that are, that this one scores below average, average, and above average. So People that are below average, they just kind of blow it all away. They don't care. People that are average are average. So they're going to screw up once in a while because average people screw up once in a while, right? But it's yeah. not it's not going to be chronic. And chronic is a good word to describe below average. And then people who are above average, you just they're the kind of people you just don't have any problems with. They they tend to become like wallpaper. Almost because they just show up every day. They do their job. They don't stir up, you know, a lot of mess and they go home. And well, what are, what are the odds of somebody? It seems like if this person did as bad as bad as they could do on just every attribute that you measure, what are the odds of that? Oh, I don't see a lot of them, but that's why I picked this one as the example that we use on the yeah. website because it illustrates the fact that it's level one validity and the person is a train wreck. 
<laughs> so this this is like if you were to hire this person, you would be the stupidest clod on the planet, and you deserve what you get if you hire her. Well, if you had this report, if you didn't have the report, well, you know, I guess what yeah. would the, what would the odds be if you didn't have this report of actually hiring this person? Well, look at it this way: in the days of using the paper instruments before we were able to do it online and all that, in the days of paper only, the employer has a choice. The only, you can have them complete the survey on paper, but if they haven't passed your smell test, you don't have to score it. Right. Oh, yeah. All right. So you wouldn't even run, they wouldn't even run the, the test on a lot of people. You only run the, you only, run the report on the people you're interested in so and I you're not going to be interested in everybody that comes in to apply and if they don't if they don't um give them the test then they don't pay for it that's i mean right. basically no, they don't no, they don't they don't have to pay for it if they can go ahead and fill it out that doesn't cost anything so okay. it's only the only ones you pay for are the ones you score and to explain okay. to explain if you're using the paper test you log into a website and enter the results in order to get the score. You enter, the, you enter what they re, how they responded, and we have a real easy cheat sheet you use to do that. So it only takes about four minutes to actually for the owner or the managers to score the actual report, but they see the results instantly. When you click grade, you know, it just pops up right there in front of you. So you see huh. instantly what we're looking at in that screen. What, what portion of your, your users of this assessment use the paper version versus, well, sending them to a website? Yeah, right now it's about 50-50. For years, it was all paper. For, for all the maid services in particular, they always used paper. And that's starting to change a little. But when we started doing business with the pet service industry, they almost all worked out of their homes they didn't want people coming in if they could avoid it. And they wanted a way to screen people before they actually set up meetings with them and all that. So they almost exclusively do it online where they email it to their candidates. And they have other screening tools they use before they make a decision to email it. But uh, they, they're almost exclusively online. So currently our business is about 50-50. Okay. But more and more people are moving toward doing it online. Mm -hmm. Which saves I a would. whole lot of, yeah, it saves a whole lot of time. Uh it's just a whole lot easier. Right? And especially right now, right, with the social distancing right, exactly. and yeah. everything. Right. Um, I'm, I feel looking like at, easier. I'm looking at some of the, the attributes you measure and we just talked about supervisory attitude. Some of these, I think, are, are pretty clear, clear cut in terms of drug use, theft, prospect for long-term employment. But going up a little bit, work attitudes, what is that? Hey, we, we can't see a, a uh, lot of this. I'm concept. sorry. What do you mean? What, what is work it? At, work attitudes. Oh, work attitude. attitudes. That, yeah, that's kind of misleading. That one is all about tardiness and attendance. It's, hmm. you know, is the person going to show up or are they going to call out sick when they're not really sick? That sort of thing. Right? Well, that's a really important one to yeah, be. Yeah, it is. But also, yeah, that, that one is, um, you know, I said the report overall is 90% accurate. The drug and theft scales are both way over 90% accurate. But the work attitude scale is around 65 or 70% accurate. It's the least accurate of all the scales. It's okay. still good but it's not as good as the others. So yeah. if, if somebody's report came back and the only thing bad on it was below average on work attitude, I would, the way I would treat that would be kind of like I did with the prospects for long-term employment. When you, if you see that, when you're checking the reference, you just say to the person, you know, can you tell me anything about uh, Jane's history regarding tardiness and attendance? You know, and most people will say, you know, if they didn't have a problem, they'll probably just respond and say, well, I don't recall any issues. 
Mm -hmm. right? yeah. If they start dancing around it, like, I don't know that I want to talk about that, you know, because they're fearful, you know, of saying anything, uh, then you might want to think twice. So I just wanted to point something out to everybody that's on the Facebook Live today. So this can sound like, oh, gosh, is this just a big pitch fest? for, you know, why are we like trying to push the steering group and the Orion? Uh, that's not what's going on here today. What we're trying to do is trying to get you guys ready and prepped. It's not, we're, a lot of people are struggling to hire, right? So what we're looking for, for you guys, are better tools, more tools, better tools, so that you can make better hires more consistently and not be in this perpetual cycle of losing somebody, hiring, losing, hiring. And this is just one more really excellent tool that has a long history of success. So Brian, I I'm glad as soon as you said I'm sold, I'm like, oh, uh -oh. yeah, I didn't even think of it that way. <laughs> I didn't see that either. Hey, Brian, nice to meet you, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. To, follow, the, the, to, to follow up on that, we were trying to think of what are the timely things that, that, that we could be doing. Yeah. And we're really having a hard time hiring people right now. And a lot of it has to do with uh, all the unemployment, you know, funds that are floating around out there. But July 31st is coming and it's going to be here fairly fast. And we all know based on the laws as they're written now that the $600 a week from federal funding goes away at the end of July. Stand to figure that you're going to have a lot of opportunity to pick from some really talented people who were working in hospitality and transportation and restaurants and businesses that haven't opened or haven't fully opened. And you want to make sure if you've got a lot of people to choose from, you want to choose the best you can. And just being able to, to think about, you know, work attitudes and being thinking about supervisory attitudes and propensity for, for drug use. I'm not even sure if that's top of mind for all of us when we're interviewing. So if you're using the Orion, that's great. This is an awesome tool. But if you aren't, you still need to be thinking about, you know, what, what am I learning from this person that gives me some insight on, on these attributes? Because you want to at least use this in, in, in large part to make your decisions as to who you're going to be bringing into your workforce. Yeah, yeah I want to make a comment about, about the drug use scale. Uh, a lot of states, uh, you know, now it's legal uh, to smoke marijuana and there are marijuana questions in the report. So the first thing that happens every time a new state says, OK, go out and smoke dope. They uh, I get a call from the owners in that state saying, well, how can you have a drug thing on here? So it, it, it the Trust me. Well, I shouldn't say try. I hate it when people say trust me. But <laughs> the, uh, the the ranking has nothing to do with social use of marijuana. The ranking is based on what is the likelihood of that person using drugs while they're at work. Okay. All right. So it would be no different than saying, is this person going to get drunk at work? Right. It might yeah. be legal to get drunk, but, it's, but an unsafe, it's an unsafe work practice to do it while you're at work. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I love that you compare it to alcohol. That makes it really, really clear. Yeah. Right. You know, my state is a is a, a marijuana friendly state right. and, and it's very. Yeah. And that's fine, you know, and everybody can is entitled to go out and smoke a little weed here and there, do a gummy. I don't care, you know, but don't do it at work, right? Yeah. yeah. The theft attitude scale is, again, over 90% accurate. And I, you know the old expression, I wish I had a dime for every time and I'd be rich. But I can't begin to tell you how many times people said to me, oh, I just, we just didn't think that that was right because they were so nice and they had a great work history and all that. So we just didn't believe that the report was correct when it said they were high risk for theft. Every single time that I, that I'm aware of, and I'm aware of a lot of them, when somebody is high risk and they, somebody makes a hiring decision to go ahead and put them on board anyway, it's never more than two weeks. Oh, wow. 
within two weeks Ooh. of their hire date, the owner or the manager gets a phone call from Mary customer that says, my iPhone's missing or my necklace is missing or this, this and that are missing and all that. And they always tie it back to that person. Right. And it happens yeah. all the time because people get subjectively drawn to somebody. And I always talk about Ted Bundy. You know, it, it, Ted Bundy came and applied for a job with you. You'd love him. You'd think he was the greatest guy on the planet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know that list, right? Yeah, that, he true. was out operating in your turf. Right? Yeah. And here he is out killing women all over the country. But men wanted to introduce him to their daughters because he was so charming and nice. Right? Yeah. So, you know, don't ever trust that. <laughs> that's the that's the worst thing in the world to trust is yeah. how you how you feel about somebody. Yeah, totally, totally true. Customer service wow. is a, we already talked about prospects for long term employment, but customer service is an interesting one. And I don't is Leslie on here? Oh, she's always on. I know. I'm kind of sorry she's not on here because she gave, be I'll tag her. she gave me one of the best lessons I think I ever got. She and I were, I think it was in Orlando, and we were at the the A, the ARCP or the ARCSI uh, hospitality room. And we were having some adult beverage. Having right? a cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but we, she and I were sitting out on the balcony by ourselves talking. And she, she, we got talking about the different scales and all that. And customer service came up. And she said, let me tell you a quick story. And I'll give you the brief version. She held a meeting. And in the meeting, she, uh, she described that she wanted our her clients to come home at the end of the day, walk in their house and feel like they had just walked into a five-star hotel. And she noticed one of the one of her employees got this kind of deer in the headlights look when she said that. So she didn't say anything about it at the moment, but she looked, you know, after she was over, after the meeting was over, she, uh, you know, pulled the girl aside and said, I saw you looked a little puzzled when I made the reference to the five-star hotel. And the girl said, I've never stayed in a hotel in my life of any kind. I don't know a one star from a five star to any star. I don't know what that means. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was like, wow, you know, your yeah. background and where you grew up and the circumstances you grew up in really has a big bearing on how you're going to score on customer service. So if you grew up in a neighborhood where you had to uh, sneak to the corner to avoid getting hit over the head and you walked into the bodega and there's plexiglass between you and the cashier and all that, you're not going to get any customer service. They're going to say, give me your money and, you know, here's your change. And that's the extent of it. When I go into the store, they say, oh, hi, Bill, how you doing today? Right. <laughs> and if I have a question, I can ask it and they'll give me an answer or they'll come find something for me. Right. So yeah. I know what that customer service looks like, but a lot of people don't. And it really changed the way I looked at how customer service needs to be approached. You can train customer service, but I think it, it, collectively as a group, you have to change the language because the way you and I talk or think about customer service isn't really in sync with maybe what our employees think about customer service. Does that make well, any sense? Even, even different business owners, you know, we have different ideas. I talk with people all the time. Actually, I just had somebody call me yesterday and um, he owns a, a very large business and he's like, I need some coaching lists. I got this customer and I just want to you know, <laughs> by your heart yeah, in a really right. hard way. And, yeah. and his thing is at the end of the call, he's like, yeah, I'm going to fire her. Even though my coaching was like, Oh, we well, don't really need to, you could keep, you know, whatever. But his thing is, Nope, she's out of here. Thanks. That's what I needed. Bye. 
<laughs> so, you know, totally different customer service styles, even with yeah. owners. So, absolutely. How can we not with our employees as yeah. well? The reason I point that out, too, is because maid service applicants nationwide, you know, and everything is local, right? So, mm-hmm. What happens in Charleston is different than what happens in Los Angeles or Atlanta or whatever. Absolutely. But nationwide, maid service applicants are below average 33% of the time. We're so trying to change that, Bill. You don't want to, but what I'm saying is you don't want to wipe out a third of your applicant pool because they're because the report says they're below average on yeah. customer service. So you have to take the report in kind of in total and and use it as part of your decision making process, but certainly not all of it, right? Yeah. And it, it strikes me that some of these attributes are more value based. Yeah. You know, propensity to steal really isn't a much of a training thing is it is a value thing, but customer service is almost, you could argue it's a part of you know, skill in some ways that that could be, could be taught. Right. Yeah. No, I agree. The last one on here is maybe the biggest one. Safety and risk avoidance that comes up low risk, marginal risk, or high risk. If you hire somebody that's, high risk on the safety and risk avoidance scale, you might as well contact your insurance company that day <laughs> this person and just say, hey, I got a workers' comp claim coming your way. You know? oh, God. It might be, might be a week. It might be a month. I don't know, but it's coming. And if you're in a northern state that experiences a lot of snow and ice, you can uh-huh. you won't make it past November. Right? And it's extraordinarily accurate. So I got to tell you another quick story. Client in in a suburb, a distant suburb of Illinois, I mean, of Chicago. And he stopped using the reports. He just cold turkey quit using Orion's. And we don't, I don't make a practice of chasing people down. If they stop using their, you know, they're making a decision, a business decision for whatever their reason is. So I don't even call and ask, you know, it's like, okay, you're a big guy, a big girl, do what you got to do. And so this guy stopped and he was a pretty major user and it kind of broke my heart to see him go. But um, after about a year and a half went by, and he sent me an email about something. And I said, well, I'm really surprised to hear from you now that it's been 18 months. So that prompted a phone call. And he calls me and he says, and I said to him, why did you stop? And he says, you know, to be honest with you, I, I don't remember. <laughs> but I, I do know why I'm about to start. <laughs> he said, when I was using the Orion, I had the lowest workers' comp rate you can get in the state of Illinois. And the state of Illinois is a tough place when it comes to, it's like California when it comes to workers' comp rates, right? And he said, I haven't used it for a year, a year and a half, whatever it was. He said, I'm now at the highest comp rate. I've had so many claims and I'm paying a huge amount of money. And he said, I was sitting around thinking about, well, what the hell am I doing differently? And it dawned on him. He said, I'm not running the Orion anymore. <laughs> so he started running the Orion again about a year ago. And now he's back to where he's not having any workers' comp claims and his comp rate is going down. Right. Well, you know, I wonder if it's like when we, you know, we've been cleaning for somebody for a while and about a year and a half in or something, they start getting this idea that, they're cleaner now. They're, they're they're cleaner people. They don't need help anymore. And, right. and they might cancel cleaning for like a month and a half and be like, okay, apparently we're not clean. And you guys are doing a better job than I thought. <laughs> so it sounds like you're getting a little of that. But this uh, lady here, safety and risk is about the only thing that she's got going for her. It's the only thing that she didn't. Right. <laughs> the yeah. only thing she didn't that's flatline. Her, that's her strong point. 
<laughs> exactly. But, and even that's medium risk. So I right. you know, was saying, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. But if everything else is black, well, what else do you have down here on this form? Yeah, down at the bottom, it's got questions for the post-survey interview. And what we're looking at is the short version of the report. And when you are using it, there's a button you can click on for the long version. And what the long version does is it spells out for you all the questions that you can ask during an interview that, are, that relate back to how they responded when they were answering the, the survey questions. So for example, there's a question, and I should have written it down, because I'm getting, as I get older, I'm, my memory doesn't serve me as well. There's a question that goes something like, a person who takes $5 from his or her employer is a thief. And you're answering, you know, on a Likert scale from I totally agree to I totally disagree. Yeah. So a person who takes $5 from his or her employer is a thief. Totally disagree is the person's answer, right? Huh? So it's going to yeah. pop up on there as one of the post-survey interview questions. And when you, you can read right off the paper, it's going to say this. Why did you respond totally disagree to the statement? And then it, you repeat the question. A person who takes $5 from his or her, her employer is a thief. And I wish to God I could be a fly on the wall in the room while people try to tap dance an answer out of that, right? Because you're saying, okay, you're saying it's okay to take my $5. You won't be a thief if you take $5 from me, right? Yeah, right. So, you know, people, and in that one about I've had four or more jobs in the last two years, and they go slightly disagree. <laughs> You know, I kind of, I kind of like that. That person would be fun to talk to, right? Oh, yeah. Well, some of these questions are hysterical. I mean, when yeah. you ask them why they answered the way they did, you know, it can be really comical. Is that an important part of the process, though? I mean, it is because what it's actually doing is, you know, it's not important. It's not so much as important how they answered the question as it is why they answered it that way. So it's giving you a tool to get a little deeper dive into th this person's thought processes and how they make the, how did you make it? You're not saying it this way, but in essence, what you're saying is, how did you make the choice to answer that question that way? Yeah, I, and I like that here is a great opportunity to, to do that because I know that with our regular application process, if you ask one person a question, you have to ask everybody the same question, but it looks like after they give you an answer, then you're allowed to come back and ask them again, as long as you do the same thing with everybody. Right. So it gives you that equal opportunity, but also it gives you a chance to do a little bit of a deep dive on people, which right. we don't really get with our application process as well. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's a really valuable part of that is going through the questions, you know, after after they've completed it and hearing why taking that five dollars, you know, and a lot of times they'll say, oh, I misunderstood. I meant the opposite. And that's fine. Yeah. But not, you know, in this case, you got, uh, you know, 12, 15 questions, whatever it is. You can't say, oh, I meant the opposite 12 times. You know, yeah. and, and come across as being anywhere near legitimate in your, in the way. And, and if you did, if you really did misunderstand that many times, our training is not going to land well. You're not right. going to understand anything. Yeah. Right. We're, we're getting close uh, up to the hour here. So we've got just a couple more minutes. Bill, is there any... I mean, you've been doing this for, for, for a long time and you've made a lot of observations and, uh, and, and have learned a tremendous amount about the finer points of, of, of hiring. Um, not specifically related to the Orion, but just in a general sense, is there any uh, parting words you can share with our folks in terms of uh, things they need to be, be mindful of or focusing on? I guess, especially knowing that there's going to be uh, a lot of really great uh, hiring opportunities popping up here in just a little over a month. Well, the one thing I always tell people is don't fall in love with an applicant. Right? I mean, that's, 
you know, I call it the halo effect. You know, somebody comes in and they've got a halo over their head and you just think, oh, this person's going to be great. You know, don't let your gut, your instincts or your gut suck you into a decision that's subjective. You have to look at the objective data, right? Do they really have a reasonable work history? Is it verifiable? Uh, you know, whatever else tools you use. Uh, and I, by the way, I strongly recommend doing a background check, but I recommend doing it after you do the Orion. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, if you do the Orion first, it can save you some money and not having to run the background check. But yeah, that's um, uh, I, I recommend doing both because what the Orion doesn't catch, maybe the background check will or vice versa. Because right. there's a lot of people out there that have stolen and been fired. And I imagine of all the maid owners that are on here right now, I could probably get a, a hand from everybody that says, who have you fired for, you know, have you ever fired anybody for stealing? But there were never any charges pressed. And if there were never yeah. any charges pressed, their background checks are going to come up clean. Right? Yeah. But the Orion is designed to catch those, right? So, so we did have a question here from uh, Farnaz, and she wanted to know uh, about pricing. Bill, is pricing answer easy, or do we need to send her to the website? No, it's fourteen dollars and seventy-five cents a report, and we've got a special going on right now, five dollars off uh, for either July or August, your choice when you think you're going to use it the most. There's a hundred. There's a one-time setup fee of $184.95 to create your account and train you. And we do that pretty thoroughly. But we also want to do a review with you over the phone before you even make a commitment to sign up with us because we want to make sure you know what you're getting before you make that decision because we don't want people coming back after the fact and saying, oh, I didn't think it did, you know, I didn't understand this or that or the other thing. And I can really attest to personally, I can tell you that Bill does not scrimp or skimp on customer service. You will get all the help you could possibly need or want from Bill. He never, never, ever skimps on anything. And I know, right, Barnas? It is, it is a great price. That's why, especially right now, $9.95, right, for pick a month. I mean, that's, yeah, that's for, yeah, awesome. either, yeah, either at nine seventy five for August or July. Yeah. And and uh, I'll just piggyback on what Liz is saying. You're not just getting an assessment. You're getting uh, assistance and expertise right. from somebody who knows more than anybody else I know about this topic of, of using assessments to figure out who are the best employees to hire. And using data, you guys, Some, you know, there isn't a whole lot of data outside of Bill Gelderman. So, so I put uh, the steering group uh, website there. That's uh, how you can get a hold of Bill if you uh, want more information, and he'll be uh, right on getting back to you. Uh, just quickly, cleaning business today. If you haven't subscribed, right here on the right, email, first name, last name. Easiest thing in the world, you'll be getting our newsletter. We had a newsletter went out today with some really good information in it. And I post the link to our downloads page, which includes uh, many of the topics and resources that we've shared through uh, Smart Business Moves. Um, Paul August FAQ uh, scripts, which are really awesome, are one of the more recent things. And uh, some of the uh, racism resources that we uh, we shared on Tuesday. What are we doing tomorrow, Liz? All right, so tomorrow is on the spot. And I have our last clue. If you guys can't figure out who she is from this clue, you don't know her. So this <laughs> business owner fired 11 people on one day. I know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> Famously known as Ocean's Eleven. So if you don't know that clue, you don't know her. But if you do, we're going to want to see you tomorrow. We're going to have a lot of fun tomorrow. Rapid fire uh, Q&A session for, for an entire hour. Um, 
be here tomorrow at five o'clock Eastern with all your, your important questions, all your best questions, and, and we're going to knock them out. So uh, you guys have a good rest of your day and we'll see you tomorrow at uh, five o'clock Eastern. Thank you. Thanks, Bye, Coach. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Thanks so much, Bill. Thank you. <clears throat>